This video documents the Mayflower hybrid electrical configuration optimized around the two factory original H EcoTrack lithium batteries. I followed the philosophy that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I could not help myself from continuously optimizing it. I am at the stage of a slippery slope with diminishing return on investment. I hope no further electrical improvement is needed until the H EcoTrack end of life. Not too long ago, I wired Mayflower to the ideal configuration, which means all chargers are on the charge side and all loads on the discharge side. It involved moving solar to the charge side, adding a standalone shore charger to the charge side, and keeping the inverter on the discharge side with its charging function disabled. This configuration will allow the BMS to protect the lithium batteries from overcharging and over discharging naturally. But there are still drawbacks. It is probably better to show the drawbacks graphically on the next page. First, backdoor overcharging risk for charging both H Eco tracks simultaneously. Second, high H Eco track overhead at 35 watt each. Third, too many switches to push, for example, just to turn on the light. Eco track on off. Reset, battery disconnect, and the light itself totaling four switches. Backdoor charging has been discussed extensively, and I created a video on that already. It is not a problem when charging one EcoTrack at a time. Charging two eco tracks together is possible without pressing reset, which keeps the discharge contactors disengaged, hence no backdoor. Since the discharge contactors are not energized, a 28 watt overhead reduction from both eco tracks is realized. The too many switch pushing drawback can be minimized by hybridizing the, the ideal configuration with the everything to the charge side configuration. The trick is to partition a set of critical loads to the charge side. We can leave the eco track off let the kicker AGM and solar to power those critical loads or turn on the echo track without reset to power the critical loads on the battery charge side. Two three-way switches are installed to revert the critical loads back to the ideal configuration if desired. Graphically, this is what the hybrid configuration looks like, with only one three-way switch shown. Not only is a critical low can be turned on by a single on-off switch instead of four, the H Eco track overhead is completely avoided. Good candidates to be considered for critical loads are those needed to be on 24-7, those essential ones, and those with minimal parasitic draws. Here is the final list. 
the solar controller, MT50, and my shore power watt meter are hot wired to the charge side and are on 24-7. The crank charger will only be on when there is daylight. The bedroom USB is for our circulation fan. The fridge, of course. Bath and floor LEDs from the original field slot number two. DVR, the digital video recorder. That is our rear wheel camera and GPS navigator while driving. Dimmable dome light for general purpose. Water pump and toilet flush on demand. Finally, other critical loads are satisfied by the balmy sunbox and the cell voltage monitor. As you can see, this is a slippery slope down the cliff of everything wired to the charge side configuration. It is amazing with the full blast of all the critical loads, they still consume less than the H EcoTrack overheads. Since these loads are not intended to be on at all time, the 250 watt solar and 105 amp hour kicker AGM combo should handle these critical loads while boondocking or doing storage with ease. This is a set of three pictures on how charge side power is wired to the inverter cabinet and the control panel. A number H gauge cable through a resettable circuit breaker is wired from the under chassis charge junction to a bus bar in the inverter cabinet. From there, a number 12 gauge cable is wired through in an inline fuse to the control panel. Here are the devices involved. Moving from the upper right hand corner counterclockwise are the solar controller, MT50 monitor, shore power watt meter, crank charger, bedroom USB charger, the first three-way switch for the fridge and bath floor LEDs, digital video recorder, the dome light, the second three-way switch for DVR and dome light, the water pump with a positive wire spliced to the flush circuit above, and lastly, the water pump switch to provide power to the pump and flush. In closing, we selected the critical loads for lights, fridge, plumbing, DVR, phone computer, and chassis battery for one switch operation without EcoTrack overhead. I look forward that our H EcoTrack will last a long time. If not, the labor of love continues. Cheers!